Hello folks and welcome. So I have a video for you today on Linux Mint 21.1 Cinnamon. I'm going to be talking about laptops today. There's a lot of things you need to think about when you're um, installing uh, any Linux distribution on laptops. The number one thing in everybody's mind should be uh, your connection to the internet. In most of the cases it's a, a wireless interface. So that can be troublesome on some distributions. So I'm going to show you the entire video here is being filmed on a laptop. It's a rather old laptop. I'll give you the exact model. It's a Dell Latitude E is an Echo 7470. It was produced in April of 2016. Okay, it's not too bad, but uh, it is an older laptop nonetheless. So in this video here, um, I'm going to be talking about screen resolutions, touchpads, USB mice, Accessibility options, caps lock keys, and uh, touch upon the Wi-Fi. In either case, folks, welcome. None of my videos on my new YouTube channel are less than two minutes, but they all have chapters or timelines if you hit stop. The other thing, if you have never seen any of my videos, if you read the About section, and I do encourage that you do that, and also the uh, Community tab, is in my About section I state, one of the statements I make is Linux is for any age and it, and I stand by that. So in either case, don't, don't matter what age you are, we're all in the same boat of using Linux. So today I'm going to talk about Linux Mint 21.1 Cinnamon. But uh, before I get going with those settings, I'm going to first give you all the information regarding this laptop that I'm using. And my current user for today is James. So I'm going to use INXI for this today. I could use something else that's built into Mint, but uh, I'm just going to use that for convenience purposes. There's many ways to get system information. So I'm going to drag this to the top. So what I'm using is my touchpad with uh, two fingers to do the scrolling part. And I'll get into the file manager and talk about some interesting tricks you can do with your touchpad. So this is a LM21.1 Vera Cinnamon desktop and you can see the, the laptop here. It says type laptop Dell Latitude E7470. Again, this was produced around April of 2016. So this uses an Intel i7 for a CPU or central processing unit. And uh, the graphics is fixed. In other words, uh, I only have a limited screen resolution and I'm currently filming in the maximum which is 1366 by 768 so a lot of benefits to console computers is you can swap out your video cards not so much with laptops however laptops do have their convenience factor too you can take them with you they're mobile all right with that said i'm going to continue the most important thing a lot of people overlook is the network cards when they're trying to install any linux distribution mine had no issue with any drivers but some folks um, have maybe laptops with Broadcom chipsets in them. Broadcom is uh, the wireless I'm referring to. And sometimes you can find the driver ahead of time before installation of your particular distribution. Just wanted to make mention of that. The other option too is you can look into if you uh, know for a fact you've got something that's not compatible and you're trying to, to use a Linux distribution is a secondary thought, which is plugging in a USB-based wireless card or an antenna-looking thing. A Panda Wireless comes to mind. You can uh, go Google that or search that on Amazon.com, for instance, to get an idea what that looks like. And far as I remember, I, I, I still have one laying around here somewhere, but uh, more importantly, I don't need it for this laptop. But if I recall, when I read that information on the Panda Wireless, um, it stated it's for all Linux distributions and Microsoft Windows. Just an FYI. All right, as I move along, I also have an Intel Bluetooth Wireless, which I'm not currently using. So I think I'm pretty much done with this box here. So what I'm going to do here is right click on my panel bar. Now, some of your touchpads not only have the touchpad area, but they have an extra two set of keys at the bottom. It all depends on your machine. So I'll talk about some of those selections in a minute. Where do I start? How about system properties first? So um, this again is an i7. It has uh, 
you know, not too bad. It's got 16 gigs of RAM on it and it's using a solid state hard drive. It's fairly zippy as a matter of fact. Okay. So I originally had Windows on it, which I wiped out and put Linux on it. And it runs fairly well actually. So with that said, let me continue. So under accessibility options, we have a couple of choices here. So I'll move this up out of the way because I want you to notice my calendar will grow as soon as I hit large text. And of course it blew off the screen. So I need to probably resize that a little bit better or just turn that back off, whichever. Okay, as you can see, it's resizing on the fly here. The other thing you might want to think about is a visual indicator for your caps lock and numeric lock key. So I'm going to depress my caps lock key when you don't see anything happening. Now, some of your keyboards have LEDs on them. This one does, but some of your laptops may not. So a visual indicator would be a nice, convenient thing. Now I'm going to depress the caps lock key and I get a post-it note down here. And depending on where you have the setting under notification, this is normally set for medium or small. So let me show you what the small looks like. That's the small. And um, the, the standard size, I believe, is that one and the large size is this one. So for my convenience purpose, this is fine. And toward the end of this video, I'll show you how to put a visual indicator on your panel bar. But I'm gonna continue. So the, the next uh, thing in line I'm gonna talk about is uh, your particular mouse and touchpad. It's down here near, near hardware. And you have some options on the mouse pointer. So let me make this larger for instance. And then you have the touchpad controls. And you have, um, I think it's default device behavior standard, tap to click, and uh, all kinds of stuff. And then I'll give you a demo on using this thing here in a second inside the file manager, Nemo. Comes in handy, and I'm going to show you some nifty tricks you can do with it. Anyways, folks, um, let's see. I covered the touchscreen accessibility option and um, uh, let me point out the display so this is the maximum resolution I can film in today okay there's no no double DPI on here or none of that you may have that on your laptop and or your console computer but I don't have that option here okay so it all depends on your computer but these are my screen resolutions as you can tell I'm, I'm using the highest possible for this laptop all right, now I'm going to close this down and open up the file manager Nemo. Okay, as you may have seen my earlier videos using a standard mouse to resize icons. If not, I'll, I'll do a refresher if this is the first time you've ever seen one of my videos. You can do it the old fashioned way. Or you can do it, um, well, I'm also going to demo using a standard mouse. So right now I'm going to grab a hold of my mouse. This one is a G502 Logitech, it's uh, considered a gaming mouse. It has a USB receiver. So I'm just gonna plug that into the laptop and it's already recognized. So um, let me give you an example using my pictures folder and then I'll switch over to the touchpad in a second. So I'm gonna open this up for a second. So in my previous videos, I've shown this where you uh, depress and hold down your control key while using the scroll wheel on this USB mouse, for instance, to go up and down to resize the icons. And once I get them to the size I want, I release the control key on my keyboard and they remain in this size. And now I can scroll in the new thumbnail size. You can do that also with your touchpad to a degree. So what I'm going to do now is unplug my USB mouse. You probably hear that little clatter there. And now I'm using the touchpad. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to depress and hold the control key and using two fingers on my touchpad is to scroll up and down to resize this. This is a little sensitive, but it still does work. And then when I get it to the thumbnail size roughly that I want, I release the control key and they'll remain in that size. And all I'm doing is two finger scroll up and down. You see the scroll bar here? If you want one that's larger, go look up my video on scroll bars for Linux Mint. I have a video how to explain how to make these wider if you're into that. But in either case, uh, that's one option with your touchpad. You know, you also have, um, I'm going to go to the home screen. Again, my user for today is James. 
you can right click and I have a key for that you know to do your you know show hidden or whatever other function you can tap you can click you know that kind of thing so it also has a, a physical click button too where I could click it once or click it twice that kind of thing or I could use just tap tap there's a lot of different things you can do with these touchpad but again if uh, one of you know I've heard this comment before that touchpad drives some people crazy so but you also have the option of just plugging in a real cheap USB mouse it doesn't have to be a gaming mouse like mine it could be something cheap and I've seen them as low as uh, under ten dollars US currency you know and I'm gonna plug in mine right now on the fly and it's already active while it's active, I'm still touching. Right now, I'm grabbing a hold of my touchpad. Now I'm going to grab a hold of the USB mouse. They're both being monitored at the same time. It can get confusing if you got two pointing devices. Pointing devices being mics in this case. So that's why I'm going to unplug mine. But the touchpad comes in handy. That way you don't have to carry an extra mouse. This is only when you place these things on a, on a solid surface, for instance, and have something possibly like a mouse pad or some surface that you can run your mouse on. But as far as the touchpad is concerned, um, I just wanted to let you see the scrolling feature on that. Now the last item that I'm going to add here is an extra key for the caps lock key. Now I'm going to depress my caps again. There's nothing more embarrassing than getting onto a website and you're failing logins or username and logins because your caps lock key is on and you just didn't notice it. So let's put an indicator on my panel bar. Right click. Go look for that puzzle piece that says applets on it. Click that open. Go to downloads. And when you get in here, uh, you may have to let the cache refresh, but type in CAP, as in caps, caps lock, and look for um, lock key indicator with notifications. This is the one I like to use. And then hit the install key. And once you've got a check mark, go to manage. Click that once, hit the plus key. It'll blink on your panel bar for a second and you need to configure it before use. So click the configure box and uh, do you want notifications or not? That's up to you. But I normally uh, turn these two on. I don't really need a numeric lock uh, indicator for this laptop. On my console computer I have that turned on, but not with the laptop. Okay, now I'm going to close all that. You can tell my caps lock key is on right now. So before I head on over to that web browser, I'm going to go, oops, turn that off. Now it's, it'll remain off. That A represents what state my caps lock key is on. One more time. It's currently on. And my post-it notes go away. But this remains. So before I head on over to that web browser, you probably want to do that. Unless you have all your passwords and usernames in caps, which is highly unlikely, but maybe you do. Anyways, folks, I just wanted to uh, throw this out uh, as a short video, a fairly short video, uh, regarding laptops. Thank you for watching.